I'm Michael Paluska. Everybody on this retrofitted pontoon boat is a commercial fisherman today because of Hurricane Ian. They're fishing for something else. All of this debris they're pulling out and we're learning that this is hard work and they haven't stopped ever since the storm decimated this area. Every day we're like, wow, that's, didn't expect to see that or didn't plan for that. Every day is a surprise. Not the surprise you want, but every day is a surprise. So they're right here. This is this is actually a section of wall and maybe a piece of of, uh, of the roof. I don't see how you can not do it seven days a week. I mean, there's that much work to be done. Right here's another boat in the trees. I used to look for fish. Now I'm looking for debris and boats and plastic bags. It takes quite a bit for us not to be able to get it. And, okay. You know, and then we come it's through. Just, it's and just it, brute force. It's just brute force. With broad shoulders and an easy smile, Casey Streeter took us on a tour of once pristine waters, areas now a trash heap. Every day. I find something that I didn't see the weeks and the months prior. Right. You know, it's just like, it's the gift that just keeps giving, I guess. And maybe that's not the right term for it, but man, it's just. It's the worst gift you can get every it's day. It's the worst gift you can get every day. Pretty incredible when you get out on the water and you see the stuff that we're seeing. The mangroves are look a little bit clear, and then you look behind me, and that's a houseboat. Casey Streeter <laughs> has no clue where this thing came from. But up and down, some days are good, some days are, are not good. Ted Fackler is a crabber. He won't be doing that for a while. The workout. <clears throat> the storm sentencing him to a new life of hard labor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it gets slimy. Yeah, watch out there. One, two, three, all day. It is a waltz of sorts. The captain maneuvers the boat. The men dance on the deck, fighting the current while balancing for position. They make it look easy. It isn't. So we're trying to hook this huge tree. It's been in here so long, it's got barnacles on it, it's waterlogged, soaked. This one, he's, he just said, is a monster. It's a good one for me to start my first. We're gonna put you right in the, in the mix. Let's grab a hold of it. Nicely done, you're hired. All right. 200 more times, then we gotta load. That's tough. Nice, all right. Good That's job, harder dude. than it looks. I'll say this. Uh, Working on boats together and having just that synergy of people knowing their job and everyone working together makes all the difference in the world for us. The hardest thing we do is, is actually climbing through mangroves. First of all, it's a dangerous job. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of snakes and, and a lot of hazards in the mangroves. And I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, to get in there and to navigate these root systems and, and you don't just walk into a mangrove. But I did, and Streeter isn't joking. The mangroves are a beast. See, this is how the time consuming part is navigating yourself through. And the heaviest thing that we've encountered are usually couches and mattresses. <sighs> don't hurt yourself. I got it. Good job. <sighs> Golf cart chair. Water is the lifeblood of Florida. The numbers don't lie. In 2022, the dockside value of commercial fisheries is estimated at $242 million. Combined, commercial and recreational fisheries in Florida bring in $27.8 billion, along with 173,000 jobs. We live in here, we work here, and uh, we want this cleaned up just like the rest of everybody in the community. A lot of it's to do with to get everybody back on their boats, get them fishing again, get them confident. Uh, that they're not going to wreck their boats up. These men, along with crews across the storm-battered area, are working extremely hard. According to state numbers, more than 670,000 tons of debris has been removed from the waterways. If you convert that into pounds, it's more than 1.3 billion pulled from the water. We would have uh, our, our fresh fish cut here in this case here, uh, far side case, and then it would be all ice. It would be our shellfish. This is what's left of Streeter's Fish House, Island Seafood Market, gutted, eight feet of water and two and a half feet of mud washed in. The menu on the wall, a remnant of better days. After the storm was the hardest part because my kids, look, we work seven days a week at our fish house, and our kids were either at school or at our fish house. That's where they've been raised, and that's the hardest part because I know that they, they long to have that back, and I, and I want to be able to bring it back for them. Days after Ian made landfall, we were in Matt Lachey. We didn't know it then, but we saw Streeter on the water surveying the damage. One of his fishermen's boats washed ashore on top of his fish house. 
a local photographer capturing the beauty of this area before the storm swept it all away. It's unreal, you know, I mean, and it is a long, it's a long road back. I mean, this to redo this boat will take 18 months to two years. No matter how long it takes, they'll keep removing debris and one day, hopefully, get back to their real jobs. It's mind blowing to be honest with you, knowing where we were and where we're at right now. And we've still got a long way. I'm happy with where we're at right now compared to where we were. And I know that if it doubles over, we're going to be in really good position at the one year anniversary. In Matt Lachey with photojournalist Reed Moeller, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.